of our grandparents. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. So we started talking last week about order. Mm -hmm. Order. Divine order. And so today we're going to talk a little bit more on the power of order. And uh, the subtitle for this would be Finding Love, Connection, and Purpose. Okay, Finding Love, Connection, and Purpose. So we're going to start out with one of the scriptures that we used last week that's really good by Angie Karen that says, Every living thing and every situation is in divine order. Let me say that again. Every living thing and every situation is in divine order. Believe and have faith that everything is where it is at and should be. Everything happens for our highest good. Yeah. We could go home with just that. Everything yeah. happens for our highest good. Yeah. Wow, how important it is to remember that. What a great quote. Mm -hmm. You know, order is the ability to organize, sequence, balance, and adjust. Have you ever had to adjust to situations? <laughs> to certain personalities that you know, that you see, that you deal with on a regular basis? You kind of have to adjust a little bit, right? This is the unity Community of flexibility, right? We're learning how to yeah. flex. We're learning how to be with people in, in a good way. So last week we talked quite a bit about the idea of adjusting, right? And somebody came up to me, I don't remember who it was, at the potluck and said, there's a great quote by uh, Darwin that said that it's not the strongest or the... Who told me that? It's not the... It's not the strongest or the smart the strongest or the smartest who survive, but those that are able to adapt. Mm. And I was like, "Where were you with that quote when we were?" And he said, "I started to stay up, stand up and say, I, yeah, because that's yeah, the ability to adapt is adapt. so important." So order works in balance with love to create harmony. Do you want harmony? Then you need order. Right? We need order. And we need balance. So, finding and, and experiencing love is the quest of the soul. Okay? Finding and experiencing love is that divine longing and quest of your soul. It is the beginning once you find love, of the journey of the true self. And there's no greater journey when you can be who you are, who you were meant to be here and now. Doesn't mean that's who you're going to be tomorrow or the next day, but who are you now, right? Because we what? We adapt, we grow, we adjust. Mm -hmm. We learn to flow with the go, and go with the flow, right? So love is that foundational energy of everything that we do in this world. And so once you find that and, you f and, and you're able to experience that, then you start finding the connections and you start creating community where people can be together in a harmonious way. And you find your purpose. And you find your purpose. Because how many know we all have purpose? But love can only be activated within you when you are willing to give it. Okay? Because we have it backwards. We think if somebody will love me, then I will be able to love. When the truth of it is, when you are able to give love, then you will be able to receive love, right? Because, because when love comes from you, it go, has to go through you. It is a conscious choice to love people. 
It is a conscious choice. I choose to love even in the midst of misunderstanding. Even in the midst of, you know, people talking, people doing things, people saying things that are not harmonious. Because what are we here to be? We're here to be what? Peacemakers. To bring forth and manifest harmony in the world. We're here on this planet to learn the lesson of love. And to experience the intensity of love in the midst of the opposites. You ever prayed for the love of your life to show up? And then you had somebody show up that was definitely not the love of your life. Right? That happens all the time. And that happens on purpose. You know why? Because it, it is learning to love, as the old song says, the one you're with. Love the one that shows up. Love the person who is in front of you, who is next to you, who is with you. And then you open the door for there to be more love. And somebody can join you in that. Right? Because if you want love, you have to give love. Jesus said is what? More blessed to give. Why is that? Because it is through the giving that we receive because I am blessed. When you're a giver, you're a creator. When you're a giver, you're a world shaker, a world mover. When you're a giver, you're a peacemaker. You understand what I'm saying? People will say you're weak. will say you're mamby-pamby. They will say all manner of things about what Jesus said. But they will know that you are true disciples of the teachings because of you got the right doctrine. That's not what it says, is it? No, because you love each other. And when you love people, oh my goodness, it, it, it spreads. Love is contagious. Say it with me, I'm contagious. <laughs> That's probably not a good affirmation <laughs> right now. I don't know how to think about how that. How about my love is contagious? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my love is my contagious. Love is contagious. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting you talk about it, it, it is a position of strength when we love yes. in spite of appearances, in spite of what's going on. And it's interesting that just a couple of weeks ago, there's some in the evangelical circles that made the headlines that have now said that Jesus' teachings were weak. And that they're not relevant. The idea of turning the other cheek is not relevant for today. That might be an indicator of why some of the nonsense that's going on is going on, right? So, but the ability to be able to stand up in the face of chaos, opposition, disagreement, disharmony, people thinking differently than you think. Oh, my goodness. And stay in a place of peace. Well, they can be wrong. <laughs> is strength. Right? That's strength. <laughs> the scripture says in uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. <gasps> self-control. We talk a lot about doing the work. Self-control. Unfortunately, James doesn't have a dial on him where I can just <laughs> control him. He has to do it for himself. I don't have a dial on me that he can turn and control. <laughs> I have to do it for myself. We all have to be responsible and do it for ourselves. There's a song by Jefferson Starship. There are lots of songs by 
<laughs> Don't you want somebody to love? Don't you need somebody to love? Wouldn't you love somebody to love? You better find somebody to love. And you know, to me, that, that is so powerful. That, that's a very spiritual understanding. A lot of our music, you know, the, the, there's, there's the, the, the poetry. It's more than poetry. Okay. You better find somebody to love. How I many know oh, that's your responsibility? We need to find somebody to love. Maybe, you know, it's your next door neighbor. Maybe it's the kids, you know, that live next door. Maybe it's whatever, you know, whoever. But you need to find somebody to love because once you find love it's transformative it's transformative it's a transformative moment once you find love and, and I know people that say oh man after I found love my life changed forever right and you you have to experience it for yourself because nobody can take it away from you once you experience it for yourself because you know. You know. Fall in love with life. Fall in love with your life. Love your life. Love life. Right? Love people. Fall in love with people. And fall in love with divinity. When you fall in love with life, when you fall in love with people, you fall in love with divinity. When it says to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the act of love. The act of love. Until you do that, then there's holes, right? There's spaces inside of us that, that are incomplete. We don't feel whole. We don't feel well. And so once you find love, oh, that is the moment. That is your born-again moment. Right? I've been saved by love. Are you with me this morning? So we know the one is the many, and the many are the one. So by learning all to learn, learning to love everybody, you're learning to love all the different aspects of the divine. Say it with me. Really? That's loving God. I'm not saying it's easy. Because you've got to get a lot of thoughts out of the way. You've got to let go of some feelings. You've got you to deal with some things on the inside that are blocking you from being able to give love to other people. Does that make sense? See, if you can only love certain people, then your love is limited. And it's conditional. I love you because you love me. But Jesus said, it's even greater when you can love somebody that doesn't love you. How do you do that? How do you do that? You show them respect. You honor them. You allow for their opinion. You allow for them to breathe and to take up space. <laughs> right? <laughs> I remember I walked into a a furniture store one time and the the guy who owned the place was was on a rampage and he was mad because there were some there was some guy sneaking around and and he was talking about how he didn't have the right to breathe the air he didn't deserve to be here well guess what he's a child of god just because he was messing around behind the furniture store doesn't mean now, it doesn't mean you can't call the cops on them, right? It, can't, it doesn't mean you can't file the restraining order if you need to do that, right? But what it does mean is that you can respect them as human beings. Are, are we making sense this morning? 
So what did Rumi say, Leah? Rumi said, love is the bridge between you and everything. Love is the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you build a bridge? Mm. It's through love. And what is love? Yeah. Love is caring. It is the act of going beyond your ego personality. Right? And being of service in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Stepping outside of your comfort zone. We love our comfortable zones. I, I love my comfort zone at home. You know? My chair that I sit in and and, you know, the, uh, my desk that I, that I work from and, and my bed that I sleep. I love my comfort zone, right? And, and I love my life. But I have to reach out beyond that in order to be complete, in order to be fulfilled, to be unconditional. You know, I was thinking about the, the mother bird that when she knows it's time for the chicks to leave the nest, one of the things that she starts doing is stirring up the nest and making it uncomfortable. Mm. She starts moving things around and make it uncomfortable so that they want to venture out of it. Ah, so sometimes we like to stay in that that feels really, yes, you know, it feels good, it feels comfortable, right? We don't want to deal with unpleasant people or people who think differently than we do, yeah. but everyone that shows up in your life serves a purpose. From those that are the easiest to love mm. all the way to those that are just so hard to be with. They're serving a purpose. Do you know what that purpose is? Have you kind of explored it and and delved into it to, to understand and know what that purpose is. Because that's one of the things that I do first. When someone shows up in my life that's presenting me with some kind of a rub, some kind of a, mm, there's just something there, the first thing that I have to go to and look at and ask myself is, what is this person reflecting to me? What are they here to teach me? Not, oh, I get to deal with another, you know, personality. What, what are they here to teach me? What are they here to show me? So e the people that show up that even are the hardest, the most negative people that you, that you can imagine assist us in showing us the opposites. Sometimes, I know you've used that phrase about, sometimes they serve as a warning. Not, not how not to be or not, you know, what not to do. There's that. But they show us the opposite because if, it, if we're always with the easy to love, easy to get along people, always with them, we forget that it's not always like that. And then when we meet up with someone, it's like we don't know how to be with them. So they show us the, the opposite and the shadow. Did you know you have a shadow? Let me tell you something. You have a shadow. <laughs> How do I know? Because I have one, you have one. We all have this shadow aspect of ourselves and it's not always pretty. The shadow part is not always pretty. So these people help us remember that, oh yes, there's a shadow part. Wayne Dyer says, let the world unfold without always attempting to figure it all out. Let, re let relationships just be, since everything is going to stretch out in divine order. Don't try so hard to make something work. Simply allow. Don't always toil at trying to understand your mate, your children, your parents, your boss, or anyone else, because the Tao is working at all times, the divine is working at all times. We can lose a lot of our energy trying to figure things out. Yeah. When we could just lean in to that understanding and knowing that everything is in divine order, I don't have to fix this, I don't have to figure it out, I don't have to do anything but just allow it to be. Yeah. Wouldn't that feel good? Yeah. To live life from that 
perspective. Absolutely. Mm. Further, the scripture tells us in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, so the Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may built, be built up until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Is anyone yet here living to the fullness, the whole measure of the Christ? I doubt it. Well, we're working on it. We're working on it, but we're not there yet, are we? That is our goal to live the fullness. Yeah. So mature. Be mature. Be, be and what is to be mature? To be mature in love is what we're talking about. It's always about always refer back to love. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the first alignment. That's the second alignment. Love, love, love. That's it. That's it. And what does that mean? And then as you grow, you start to define it. You start to feel it. You start to experience it more and more and more and more and more. And then it starts kind of coming out more, you know, through you. And that energy flows out your hands. That energy comes through your eyes. It comes through your words when you talk, when you speak. And then you become a loving presence, a healing presence in this world. Now, I know it's tough, but that's, that's why. So I want to talk for a moment about purpose. Because you think, well, what's, what's an apostle? What's a prophet? What's a, an evangelist? What are all these things, you know? And, and there, there have been different interpretations, right? And, and, and we're not saying anybody's wrong. No, 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 no. We're not saying that. But there is this fivefold ministry, five gifts and callings, that we all have, okay? And so the apostle, who's representative of the thumb, say it with me, I am thumbbody. <laughs> all right? I knew that was coming. <laughs> That's being a prophet. But anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Try to stay with us here. <laughs> So an apostle, the, the word literally in, 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 in the Greek means a sent one, one who is sent, one who is sent to build and create community. That's an apostle. And bring people together around a common goal. Okay. You may be an apostle. Now, there's different levels and different understandings of it and how it all works, but we've got some apostles in this room right here, right now, okay? And, and But in this case, it's talking about with a spiritual goal in mind, a spiritual goal in mind. So by using the gift of order and balance, these apostles have the natural ability to gather and organize people in a spiritual way. I mean, understand, we've learned to be together according to different ways. So how now can we be together in a spiritual way? So a sent one is one that Spirit has sent into the world to manifest this gift, to, to organize the community, to to bring people together. And there's some of you that, you know, we had a wonderful dinner the other night at, 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 at some, uh, with some folks, and it, it was the apostle of our sacred service <laughs> invited us over and gathered us together and fed us and, and loved us and celebrated, you know, that we've, we've reached a, a goal, you know, we, we've been able since the pandemic to actually uh, create, you know, more of the ways of service that we were doing before and actually even to broaden it a little bit and to tweak it and to make it better, right? And so we're celebrating that. How many know you got to celebrate your wins? 
Say it with me. I celebrate, I celebrate my, wins. my wins. Absolutely. And so the mission is to assist people in coming together to create community. How can we create community? How do we do that? Right? Well, somebody who is an organizer, and how many understand we need our organizers? Yes. We need people who can look. You know, I was talking to Ed. You know, Ed was telling me that, that that's what he does. He looks at a space and he can tell, you know, and he, and he does these blueprints, these plans. Where this should go there, that should go there, that should go there. And that's what an apostle does. So he's an apostle of space, <laughs> right? Apostles, they're apostles of people, apostles of things, apostles of places, apostles of finance, and event coordinators, and administrators. They all fall under this, this, this being an apostle, being sent into the world to bring order, to bring order, to bring balance. Do you see that? Do you see how important that is? And it's not just somebody who walks around calling themselves apostle so-and-so. I'm a Paul so Well, no, it's a gift. It's, it's a gift. It's a talent. It's an ability, right? You have been sent. There's some of you that have been sent here to organize this thing a little better, right? Now, that was for emphasis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we, there's certain things that need to be organized, and we need your left brain. We need your ability to put things in the right space. Don't you love those shows where they go in and everything is chaotic, and, and they say, okay, we're going to make you a closet that you're going to love. <laughs> we're going to put some shelves. You're going to have places to hang your shirts and your pants and your dresses and your clothes. And everything is going to be so neat and tidy for you. And then as you experience that organization, you feel better and you're able to flow better. And then when you go to get clothes, you're not looking around on the floor, you know, but it's been organized, right? Right. And there are people who have that gift. There's some people that have that gift in spades. And they're almost obsessive about it. Bless their hearts. <laughs> and we love them for it, don't we? We love them for it. We need it. We need it because they have the gift. So do we have any apostles here this morning? I'm sure we do. I know we do. Absolutely. And it's wonderful. So that's the thumb ministry. <laughs> You know, the apostle's part of the thumb. I'm part of the thumb because you need the thumb in order to grab hold, right? You need that thumb. Without your thumb, you pick something up and, <laughs> right? You need the thumb. So the thumb is very important to organize. Then there's the prophets. And that's the pointer finger. <laughs> prophets. They're the ones that are led by intuition to know what the next step is. Right? And they use creativity in everything they do. They're creative. They're always in the right brain, just hanging out. I don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Those prophets um, and right brain people, I think. <laughs> the prophets are the singers, yeah. the poets, the songwriters, the authors, the spiritual influencers. The creative right brain types. Sharing the word of truth from a higher realm, from a higher dimension. They're experiential. If you talk to somebody who's a prophet, you say, well, I think you should do this. They say, wait a minute, no. Um, i got to experience it for myself. As soon as you tell them, don't do that, they will do that. <laughs> If you say, don't do this, they will do this because of that creativity. They want to experience. They must experience something for themselves. Now, as you go through this, you might find that you've got a little bit of apostle, you've got a little bit of prophet, you've got a little bit of all of it, you know. But, but we need the prophets in our midst, the, the creative folks. You know, we need that creativity. We need people 
who can... See, sometimes we can sing the truth and people get it a little better, right? Than just telling them. Because when you sing it, it, it touches the soul. It lifts the soul. It opens your heart so that spirit can score a touchdown, right? And, and that's why we're here. And, and, and we're just sharing so that spir- spirit's doing the work. We're not doing anything. Spirit's doing the work, right? That spirit where? In you. And nobody can tell you anything that you don't already know. And that knowledge is inside of you. You hear something, you go, oh, yep, that's it. That's right. That's, that's it. Because you, you connect with it. You resonate with it. Then there's the evangelists. They're the longest finger. Okay? And they share the message of good news. Good news. Let's say it together. Good news. Good news. People who say they're evangelists and don't share good news, I have my doubts. <laughs> right? They trumpet the message. They get the word out. I mean, no, you need people like that. You need people, we need people in our community who can get the word out. The marketers, the advertisers. You know, the marketers of what? Love and truth. That's what we're marketing is love and truth. You understand? That's, that's the, the, the bottom line is we're marketing love. We're advertising love. We're modeling love. We're showing love. We're living the truth. We're embodying the truth. You know, when I think of our unity community, that's what I think of is a model of what it looks like when love shows up and love lives through each and every one of us. And we can care for each other. We can share with each other. So you are a walking advertisement. Right? What's that? That's right. We should, we should all be evangelists. But in ancient times, they would go to how, from house to house and door to door. That's how they advertised and marketed. Today, we use social media, you know. You know why we use that? Because that's where people are. I mean, no, you have to go where people are, right? Yep. I believe Charles, Mil- Charles Fillmore would have used social media. It's a, it can be a tool of positivity or it can be a tool of fear. Your choice. Mm-hmm. Say it with me. It's my choice on how I use it and how I perceive it. Mm-hmm. Now, the ring finger, who's that? That's the pastors. We've got several pastors in here. Now, they may never call themselves the pastor, but that's who they are. That's what they are. We are joined in the community through love. A union of souls. A union of souls. We care for people in all kinds of ways. You could say that nurses are pastors. A nurse is a pastor. Because they care. And they give of themselves. Caregivers. It's not just one person. How many know that if if we just have one person who's supposed to do all the care, that person would burn up and die and, and do you know that most pastors usually can last about six years in a church before they move on because they burn themselves out? So do you know what the key is? Is to bring out that gift in all of us. We are all pastors. We are all pastoral. We're all caregivers. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a collective thing. We do it together. When you find love, then you can step into your pastoral role and share with your flock. And who's your flock? Those who are flocking around you in whatever moment that you're in. (laughs) Right? So we should take care of each other. Right? You're all commissioned to be the pastor or the caregiver of this flock. 
And if you didn't know that, then you just received your commission right now. <laughs> You've been commissioned. Yeah. You apostle you. <laughs> You've just been sent to be a pastor of souls. Sending cards, calls, texts, emails, in whatever way that you can spread that care around to each other. Right? And there's, there's so many ways to do that these days. You understand? I mean, Spirit has given us all these tools, these technological tools that we can use now. But at the same time, there's nothing like somebody giving you a hug, somebody holding your hand, right? And sometimes we need that. You get permission first, all right? Always get permission. But if somebody needs a hug, you can give it to them. And that's part of that care. That's part of that care. So Oprah Winfrey said, I trust in the ebb and flow of the universe. I trust that life's bigger than what I can see. I trust that there is a divine order beyond my control. And I trust that no matter what happens, I will be all right. Let's take a breath of that. <sighs> Isn't that good? Sometimes we need to tell each other that. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, I, I have been through similar situations, maybe not what you're going through right now. I know it's, I know it's tough right now, but you're going to get through this. You're going to ace this. You're going to make it. You're going to be okay. And just somebody telling you that, just somebody, you know, holding your hand and telling you that you're going to make it through. That's what the prayer chaplains do. Mm -hmm. You know, they... They affirm with people the good. They affirm the positive. They affirm the higher good, the higher meaning. Because sometimes we forget. We get down into the dirty, gritty, low down, stop. And I need somebody to help elevate me a little bit, right? And so somebody who can pray with me and just hold my hand and say, you're going to be okay. It's going to be all right. You're going to get through. We're going to get through. We are going to get through this. You understand? That's showing love from the heart. Now, the last one is the little finger. But it's not little because you need your little finger too. Because it's hard to grab things without your little finger. Right? That's how you grasp something is with your little finger. You grasp it. What does a teacher do? They teach universal principles of life to people. Universal principles. This applies to everybody. Isn't that great? This isn't just for us four and no more. These are universal principles that if you use them, if you work with them, if you, if you, you know, work at it, they will bless your life. They will change and transform your life because they're universal the principles of this universe. Divine principles. Got that. I think. Thank you. So spiritual teachers speak about love, forgiveness, peace, understanding. You know, in Unity, we have something called the L, the licensed Unity teacher. Licensed Unity teacher. And we have one person who's going through that. Lisa is going through that program right now. And, to, and it'll be very soon. She will be a, a licensed unity teacher in our group. And we're just really excited about that. And uh, they are responsible to do classes, you know, from unity texts and unity teachings. And they're responsible to lead people to grow in spirit and in truth. That's what a teacher does. Now, maybe you're, you're, you're teaching children, you know? It's all the same. It's universal. And if you're coming from a loving space, then you're going in the right direction. Make sense? So, there's so much more we can say about all these, but that, that's enough for today, right? The number five is the hand 
that loves and supports. You are the hand of God. You are the hands and the feet of God. The number five symbolizes freedom, curiosity, change, a desire to have adventures and explore new possibilities. It is the grace that guides us. You know, a loving hand that gently, you know, guides you and leads you. That's what the hand ministry, that's what the hands are for. We are the hands of God bringing this divine love to the world through our service to each other. Wow. Let's take a breath. Whew. So a lot of stuff in there today. We're going to turn down the lights now. I just invite you to get comfortable right where you're at. realization that, that there is this energy, this power this divine love that desires to wrap us all up together in a warm blanket to hold us to comfort us to care for us So in this moment together, we relax. And we accept this morning the, the notion that it is in giving that we receive. 
So we release the barriers and the blocks and the walls. We let go. And we open the door, maybe just a little bit, a crack, and let in the light. Let in the light. We are here now to experience our lives, to fall in love with ourselves, with our lives, with each other. What a wonderful thing. What a great calling that this really is to fall into love. Rumi said to fall in love and stay there. That's the key. This is the foundation. When Jesus was talking about being baptized, that's what he's really talking about. The water symbolizes truth. The water symbolizes the washing away of the false ideas, the misunderstandings, so that our eyes become open, so that we can see clearly who we really are, the people we meet. They're just a, a different version of the divine, another way of looking at God. And once you get it, once you know it, it makes all the difference. Perhaps you know of someone that you'd like to pray for, that you want to bring into this moment. There's so much suffering in the world. We see it all around us. There are cities experiencing flooding and fires and storms. There are continents that are experiencing earthquakes. And so we bring all of these beautiful souls before us here and now and we, we surround them with a, a prayer for peace a prayer for divine order that even in the midst of all this chaos that there is an order that there's someone out there who can help can stand with and support and reach out a hand. We pray for that loving kindness. For that wonderful presence of God to be revealed in all of this in this day. And so we hold each other now person to your right and left and front and back. Just say a prayer for them now in your own way. Hold them in this moment. Hold the space for them. You might just affirm, I love you and I give love. I love you and I send my love to you. I appreciate you. I bless you. Perhaps there are family members, friends that are suffering. Bring them into this moment. Peace and blessing. We're grateful now for all the good in our lives. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the grace, for these moments of grace and peace. And so I invite you into the stillness for just a moment. As Jeff plays, just allow your consciousness to expand and receive whatever you need this morning.
so. We're grateful for those that are watching online. We love you. We bless you. We see you experiencing all that you need in this moment. The name and nature of the love, the Christ, the beauty, the grace. Amen. And so it is. <sighs> All right. I invite you to take in a good breath and just kind of reach and stretch. Don't move too fast. Kind of let the muscles adjust a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for your prayers this morning. Mm. Well, thank you.